it states, Jeremiah found a cave dwelling. He carried the tent, the ark, and the incense altar into it. Then he blocked up the entrance. The place shall remain unknown, he said, until God finally gathers his people together and shows mercy to them. Then the Lord will bring these things to light again. Christ died and the earth shook and the rocks were rent, a crack came right down the entire face of the escarpment, right past the left side of the cross hole, and the stone opened up. Down below, 20 feet below, God had arranged for the Ark of the Covenant with its mercy seat, if you please, his earthly throne to be positioned right down there 600 years before in 586 B.C. <coughs> when the Babylonian army destroyed the city. When the centurion stuck his spear in Christ's spleen and probably left ventricle to make sure he was dead before he gave the body to Joseph of Arimathea, when he pulled that spear out, the separated platelets and serum of the blood of the Son of God gushed out, went down through that crack onto the mercy seat, and that ratified the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. The fourth trip I made into this chamber, it was spotless. The furnishings were set in perfect order. The Ark of the Covenant, however, had been placed against the wall, the end of the cave. The end of the cave was a beautiful crystal radiating the colors of the rainbow. Now, I know New Age and all that goes in for rainbows, so do homosexuals and all of that. But God used it first, all right? It's around his throne and it's around his earthly throne. Now, there's no veil in this setup. So it is the earthly, it's God's temple on earth, or his residence where he once dwelt. And uh, anyway, when I found it like this, there were four young men standing in there. And I started to say, you know, what are you doing here? And I froze. I couldn't move, couldn't breathe, couldn't do anything. One of the people said, we are the four angels that have been taking care of the ark since Moses put the tables of stone in it, right? And they instructed me to set up my video camera with the tripod, aim it at the ark of the covenant, and they went over lifted the mercy seat up. I don't know how heavy it is. I've never tried to lift it, but it's solid gold. And the angel said, take the tables of stone out of there. God wants everyone to see those. I took them out. All right. They put the mercy seat back down over the Ark of the Covenant. I backed away a little bit. The angel came, got the tables of stone, put them on a rock ledge inside the chamber, and I was then instructed to take a sample of the blood from the mercy seat, have that analyzed, and I did everything the angel told me to do. Real quickly, okay, uh, dried blood is dead blood. Everybody knows that, all right? They can test the blood of the pharaohs, the mummies of the pharaohs, all right? There's certain things they can do. They cannot get a chromosome count by any method I'm familiar with, all right? Things keep changing. I don't profess to know everything. However, there's no way I know that you can get a chromosome count out of dead blood. You can get a DNA and some other things, but not a chromosome count, all right? That's done by living white blood cells. Now then, first of all, in this analysis, I took the blood into a laboratory in Israel. I asked one of the people I work with in, in antiquities, where is a good laboratory that does reliable work? And they said, such and such, such and such. I took it. I just said, please examine this blood and tell me what you can tell me about it. All right? They said, well, look, 
we're going to reconstitute it. We're going to put it in normal saline and keep it at body temperature for 72 hours with uh, gentle swirling. All right, that's their business. That's great. I said, now I want to be there when you check it out. They said, fine. So I was back. They checked it out. I said, now uh, they said it's human blood. We can tell that. They did whatever tests they need to do. And then I said, take some of the white blood cells and put them in a growth medium and keep them at body temperature for 48 hours. And they said, well, that'll do no good because it's dead blood. I said, would you please do that for me? And they said, okay, we'll do it. So anyway, I said, I want to be there when you take it out and examine it. So I was back there. They took it out, examined it under a microscope, and the one technician called the other one over there, and then they called the boss over there, and they were talking Hebrew a mile a minute there for a little bit, and they looked at me and they said, Mr. Wyatt, this human blood only has 24 chromosomes in it. Everybody else has 46. You see, 23 from your mother, 23 from your father, 22 autosomes from your mother, 22 autosomes from your father. You get an X from your mother, you may get an X or a Y from your father, all right? This blood had 23 chromosomes from the mother's side, one Y chromosome only. You see, the ch a child could not have developed if they hadn't had the autosomes from the mother. So all of his physical characteristics were determined by his mother's side of the family, her autosomes. His maleness was determined by this one Y that came from a source, not a human male. Then they said, this blood is alive. And then they said, whose blood is this? I said, it's the blood of your Messiah. And I assure you, those men's lives have changed. Jesus' blood flowed out of his side, a crimson current onto the rocks below, and onto the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant ratifying the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. In the New Testament, it mentions the blood hidden in the earth. This is He who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that bears witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree as one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his Son. In these free handouts, it gives these verses. Now, I'll share a couple of them with you. 1 John chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. It says, There are three that bear witness in earth, not in the earth, but in earth, meaning under the ground, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. Then, verse 9, it says, If we receive the witness of man, the witness of God is greater. And this, speaking of the blood and the water presented to our hearts and minds through the power of the Holy Spirit, this is the Father's witness and testimony of His Son. Now, in a court trial, a witness gives a testimony. That testimony becomes evidence or proof. All right. So what this is saying in our language of today is that the blood and water 
on the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant, the earthly throne of the living God, is the Father's proof to the inhabitants of this world that his Son has indeed died for us, that we have been redeemed, and that we can come to him in the name and blood of his Son, receive forgiveness and restoration so that one day, as recorded in the 22nd chapter, 14th verse of the book of Revelation, it says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they might have a right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. The payment, uh, the payment dear friends, has been made. And in God's appointed time, you will be able to see the proof for yourself. I believe the Ark of the Covenant will stay right where it is throughout eternity. It is God the Father's proof to the inhabitants of this earth that his son died for us. Now, there are some things that are going to happen in the future 